Hello indie game fanatics and welcome to my 10 early game tips for my time at Sandrock. I have been having a blast playing this game and found that these tips and tricks really helped in the early stages. Um, I originally looked into seeing if there were other videos out there that provided these types of tips and I found very lacking in what they provided. Most of it was just very generic things for these types of games and not specific to my time at Sandrock. So if you enjoy these types of videos, then drop a like and leave a comment down below which tip helped you the most. Remember, you can always catch me live throughout the week. I stream every weekday morning from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss out. Let's jump into my top 10 tips for my time at Sandrock. Enjoy! First thing we are going to talk about is game speed. I want to start with talking about this mechanic as it's very interesting and not a feature I am used to seeing in these types of games. You can change the length of a day and the processing speed of your machines with this setting. Note it does not change movement speed, only the day length and machine speed as they are tied together. I say this because they have tweaked this setting a few times in early access. You can make the day length almost double or three times shorter. You can change it at any time. Many people recommend starting off by slowing down the game speed in order to give you time to explore and become familiar with the map. And while some people will find this helpful, I found the normal game speed perfectly fine for my first playthrough. If you ever find yourself just waiting on machines to process resources, you can always speed them up in-game for a short period of time just to avoid any waiting. It truly is an interesting mechanic, and I hope that I can find more uses for it in the future. The map of my time at Sandrock is fairly large. There are whole areas that you will have to unlock in order to be able to explore them. This is accomplished by either story events or technology achieved. You start out with very little info on the map other than the layout of the world, locations that are highlighted with story events, and the quick travel stations that you can utilize at the start of the game. As you become friends with people or unlock upgrades, you will be able to see specific people, chest locations, and friendship quests on the map. As you explore and uncover the surrounding areas, you will be able to see the general spawn locations of different monsters within the game. The map is very well utilized within this game. Goals are the currency in my time at Sandrock, and you will need all you can get early on. The best ways to get goals are by completing commissions, finding chests, and selling items. Commissions we will cover in greater detail later in the video. Chests are spread around the world. You can find them hidden around town, covered in sand in the desert, or in caves and dungeons. They often contain useful items, but also goals and can be broken down for extra resources once you have the required tools. When it comes to selling items, I have yet to really dive into what is most valuable, but early on getting gold ore or shiny scorpions from digging through scrap and breaking rocks are the best items to sell for a quick goal. Stamina is the most valuable resource in the game, as you will typically run out of it before you run out of daytime early on. Stamina is used whenever resource gathering or in combat. The only gathering action that doesn't use stamina is when picking up debris around town. There are two primary ways to regain stamina. Those are resting in a chair or bench, and consuming certain food items. When resting in a chair or bench, the quality of the seed affects the rate at which you regain stamina, and anything you can craft early on is very slow at regaining stamina, leaving really only one option that is good, and that is consuming food items. Food items can be acquired in multiple ways, from shops, missions, crafting yourself, or enjoying a meal at the Blue Moon. The best way early is to get yourself some grub at the Blue Moon. With the right combination of foods, you can regain over 100 stamina in a single meal. These meals cost goals, and so you have to plan around that cost. But when needing to gather some extra resources to finish a commission, there is no better way to do it. Data Discs Data Discs are so valuable. I don't see enough people talking about them. They are how you unlock new tech, and the speed at which you can unlock them. Data discs are typically acquired through breaking down scrap piles, or mining in caves or dungeons. Early on though, there is a fantastic way to acquire them, and that is just buying them at Euphala's Salvage Shop. You can buy it, 
10 a day for around 200 goals. It's a serious bargain for getting a jump start on unlocking new machines with key, and the best way to spend goals after grabbing a meal at the blue moon. Machine Tech Upgrades You are given a lot of freedom in my time at Sandrock and how you want to play it. Certain storylines can be unlocked in different orders depending on what you choose to do. But machines you unlock is no different. Machine Tech Tree allows you to unlock a large selection of machines in whatever order you want. Later there will be machines that you need certain other ones research to unlock. These do affect what commissions you can accept. I may cover the best order to unlock them in the future with another video. Multiple of each machine. It is highly recommended that you create more than one of most machines once you unlock them. This is because many resources require the same machine to be produced, but have to be produced separately. So in order to get them at the same time, you need multiple machines. Notable ones to make multiples of are the Dew Collectors, Recycler, Furnace, Processor, and Grinder. Commissions are the primary way to get goals, build relationships, and progress through the game. Each day you can start out by grabbing one commission per day. Later you will be able to get two or three per day depending on your skill upgrades. Each commission is tied to a townsfolk and will grant you goals, friendship points, and workshop reputation. While you can technically get all of these through other means and never grab a commission, unless the quest requires it, that would just be silly, as they are the best way to turn resources into profit. So always make sure to swing by the Commerce Guild near the start of the day and grab your commissions. The museum is an interesting part of the game. It's like a collection display of your progress in game. There are relics to collect while mining or exploring the world, and you can restore them at the museum and then either donate them to the collection or take them home. Both options have rewards tied to them, and you should try to figure out which is best for you. I personally rush the collection of certain relics because they give me bonuses to stamina, and then I place them at home instead of donating so I get the bonus early on. Friendships. This is after all a life sim game, so what would it be without friendships with the townsfolk? Romantic relationships are still in early development and also later game content, so I will avoid talking about them too much, however friendships you can work on from the start. There are many ways to build those friendships in the game. There is talking to each townsfolk once a day that will get you points, playing critters with them, dueling certain people, creating cooking recipes, or gifting the townsfolk are all valid ways to build friendships. Benefits can include stat bonuses for you or items sent through the mail system, and free stuff is always a good reason to do something. Thank you for watching my 10 early game tips for my time at Sandrock video. Are there any important tips you think I missed? Was there a favorite tip of mine that really helped you in the early game? Please let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I live stream throughout the week and upload videos such as this whenever I finish them. Have a great day.